Genghis Khan, born in 1162, is revered as the greatest conqueror in human history. His armies forged the colossal Mongol Empire, the largest land empire ever known. Beyond his military exploits, Genghis Khan led a personal life marked by numerous relationships including six wives and approximately 500 concubines. His legacy extends to a significant genetic impact, with an estimated 16 million males today, constituting 0.5% of the global male population, sharing a genetic link with Genghis. Khan's conquests included marrying the princess daughters of clans throughout the Mongol Empire. After a successful conquest, he would inquire about the most beautiful women in the region declaring, I will find her. Genghis Khan had a preference for women with small noses, rounded hips, long hair, and beautiful voices. He used a point system to judge women, assigning those with low scores to his officers. He enjoyed being intimate with the wives and daughters of defeated rulers. Genghis Khan had four main wives, each holding special importance. He also married a woman from each tribe he conquered, strategically using marriages as diplomatic tools to maintain peace between different clan groups. For example, when he conquered the Tangut, he married Chua, the daughter of the clan leader. When dealing with the Jin dynasty in China, he was offered one of the emperor's daughters and other valuable items. Genghis retained some of the women he received, but married off others to his commanders and subordinates. He dispatched troops to find Yesui, a Tatar woman, at the request of his wife Yugen. Upon locating her, he married Yesui, incorporating her into his group of wives. Genghis Khan's soldiers believed he had exceptional skills in the bedroom, a belief he encouraged by engaging with multiple women every night. Once Genghis Khan spoke to a Taoist monk claiming to be over 300 years old. When the monk suggested giving up hunting, sex and taxing, Genghis agreed to follow only one piece of advice, and it wasn't giving up sex. Genghis Khan's romantic life involved both forced relationships and consensual unions. Despite having concubines, he displayed considerable respect and love for his wives, particularly his first wife, Bort. Borte and Genghis were promised to each other at the age of 10 and married when Genghis was 16. Their early union faced a challenge when the rival Merkit tribe kidnapped Borte. In retaliation following his father's example, Genghis rescued Borte after eight months of captivity, during which she had been subjected to repeated assaults. Despite lingering doubts about his son's parentage, Genghis accepted and treated Yossi, Borte's son, as his own. Genghis valued Borte's counsel and respected her opinions. Unknown places after a raid on her village, she offered to have Yesui be his wife instead. Genghis Khan dispatched troops to find Yesui and upon locating her, he married her as well. Both women became part of his group of wives. Genghis Khan's soldiers believed he had exceptional skills in the bedroom, a belief he encouraged by engaging with multiple women every night. Once Genghis Khan talked to a Taoist monk claiming to be over 300 years old, when he asked about living a long life, the monks suggested giving up hunting, sex, and taxing Taoist monks. Genghis agreed to follow only one piece of advice, and it wasn't giving up sex. Genghis Khan's romantic life involved both forced relationships and consensual unions. Despite having concubines, he displayed considerable respect and love for his wives, particularly his first wife, Borte. Genghis and Borte were promised to each other by their parents at the age of 10 and married when Genghis was 16. However, their early union faced a challenge when the rival Merkit tribe kidnapped Borte in the Mongol steppes. Stealing women from other tribes was a common practice. Genghis, following his father's example, retaliated against the Merkit, rescuing Borte after eight months of captivity, during which she had been subjected to repeated assaults. Shortly after her rescue, she gave birth to a son named Yossi, whom Genghis accepted and treated as his own, despite lingering doubts about his biological parentage. Genghis valued Borte's counsel and respected her opinions. In Mongol society, men believed that wise wives could prevent them from making foolish decisions. Borte eventually became the Grand Empress of the Mongol Empire, and only sons born to her were considered Genghis's legitimate heirs. While polygamy was accepted in Mongol society for those who could afford it, Genghis, a wealthy man, had six wives. His affection for his second wife, Kulan, was notable as she accompanied him on many military campaigns. Additionally, Genghis married two Tartar princesses after defeating their father in battle. Each wife had her own tent, along with her children, and ruled over a distinct territory. 
Among all his wives, Borte held the most significant influence and power in Genghis Khan's life. In 1226, Genghis Khan came back from Persia to quell a rebellion by the Tangut in China. While he was away, the Tangut royal family had regained their independence. Legend has it that on the night before the crucial battle in 1227, Genghis had a dream of red blood on white snow. His oracles explained that the blood symbolized the Tangut prince's blood, and the snow represented the prince's daughter. The following day the Mongols triumphed over the Chinese and killed 